Can we not act like sports isn't connected to slavery? I mean, the NBA decided they were no longer going to use the word owner to talk about the people who own the teams. They're going to use the term governor instead. And white people, right on time, started white people and saying, oh my God, owners own things. I can't own my car. I can't own my house now. The world's going crazy. No, you can own things. You just can't own people. And yes, you're right. NBA owners don't go around saying, I own that player. They just act like it. Look at the NCAA. The NCAA is structured to exploit the labor of athletes. So by the time they get to the NBA, we've already known already normalized the idea that they don't deserve to have agency or control over their own lives or bodies. You had people like Donald Sterling with the Clippers who would walk through the locker room with his girlfriends and say, look at these black bodies while they were in the shower. You got, you got Dan Gilbert writing letters to LeBron when he leaves Cleveland the first time, not acting like LeBron left the team, but like he left his plantation. That mentality, this idea that we get outraged whenever a player decides to go on his own and pick his own team like Kevin Durant did, or the idea that we get mad that somebody wants to make as much money as possible when, in fact, the owners make billions enough to write those checks to the players who only get the millions. That logic says that we think we can control players whenever we want. That's a slave mentality. And the word owner doesn't change that, but it does reflect that. So this conversation we're having right now about why we shouldn't call them owners is part of a bigger conversation we have to have about how we have to stop exploiting athletes and see them as human beings instead. Black Coffee starts now. Welcome to BET's Black Coffee. Yes. Yeah. I'm Mark Lamont Hill. I'm fired up this morning. Yay! That's right. Let's I got go, Gia Peppers with me. I got Jameer yeah. Pine with me. Ha. And a very special guest today. She is a YouTube vlogger. She is a podcast co-host. And you probably follow her because everybody does. Because she has a beautiful family on the IG. And she's a makeup artist. And she's a model. And she's a wife. Oh, and she's a mother. And she's an all-around media renaissance woman. Please welcome oh. to the building, Kadeen Ellis. Thank yeah. you. You King forgot immaculate baby everything. hair. <laughs> immaculate baby hair. <laughs> Can you zoom in <laughs> on that? <laughs> the baby hair is babying today. Oh my thank goodness. You. It really is. We're thank so you. happy to have you here. I'm so happy to be here, and thank you for that intro. I forgot I did all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I had baby brain after these three kids. I know. I'm still trying to get it together. So Understood. thank you for that. I'm so excited to have you. Ever. Thank you. Obsessed with that. I watch y'all on the IG. No. You stop putting the. You the, said the, the IG. Way. That's like grandma says the IG. I'm old. <laughs> Sorry. But not that I, old. I've owned it. I just own it now. I say things like the wait, IG. Wait, oh, hold up, man. Though. That that intro was crazy. Intro I love cool. what you said about that. The the owner conversation is very interesting to yes. have because there is the remember, wasn't the book the forty five million dollars slave or the, the forty million dollars slave? 40 yep, yep, million dollars slave. Yeah. Like that has been a, a, a constant narrative for players to have to deal with for years. So it's dope to see the NBA try to at least alleviate some of that feeling with mm -hmm. removing the word, mm -hmm. but. It's still going to have to be a lot of different like policies in place to where no one on the Warriors, you know, owners team will put their hands on Kyle, Kyle Lowry. Like it has right. to be. Right. Right. That's my point. It's like people say changing language doesn't change reality. But it kind of does. It's it part of the, does. It's part of the process. Though. Yeah. They have By that logic, we should. Though. Mm -hmm. Right. They're practicing place. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. I completely agree. Uh, <laughs> I think that no one owns me. Talk about it. Y'all, you may, may lease me. <laughs> right? now, that, what that, about your mama? That's a, well, mama definitely owns me. Mama own you. Mama own me, right? I came right. through a very specific tunnel. I understand. Like, that's ownership. <laughs> Everybody else is leasing me, and all right? And there's no return. No, no, no. 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 There's no return. We have tried. Believe, what? <laughs> we, you get to the question. I'm sorry. There is... <laughs> what? Bring it up we want mama. you to join... <laughs> We can shoot it right now. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a discussion going on. We want you to join it. So make sure you use the hashtag Black Coffee Live. And today's question of the day, it's an interesting one. I want y'all to really answer this. Would you agree to an open marriage? Drop your thoughts in the comment section right now, and we'll read them throughout the show. No. That's a good Gia, look thing. at your face. <laughs> you gotta wait. We didn't even no. end. She said no. No. I, I, there's so much judgment. I'm not judging. It's just not for me. You don't know that? I do know. I do know that. <laughs> all right, we'll talk about it later. We'll talk anyway, about it later. Anyway, so <laughs> what we like to do with all of our guests, we yes, like to play a me. fun game at the top. Okay. Just so I we can, games. like, break some of the ice okay. and so you can feel very comfortable. I, feel, I mean, I feel like the ice has been broken, but whatever. I'm pretty yes. sure. We talked about tunnels. He came through his Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, true. Yeah. So I feel we all broke in, but okay, go ahead. Basically family. I yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. He comes yeah. to the cookouts. For sure. <laughs> all 
already be a hooker girls rule, so y'all like that. That is true. Um, we will get the invite okay, now. Okay, so the game is called One Gotta Go. Okay. And you know, it's like those memes. Like, we're gonna give you four options, one gotta go, you gotta tell us why. Got it, okay. All right, so they, they're, the category is hood movies. Hood movies. All right, put it oh, up on the know, screen. You know, I'm so bad. I know. Right. Okay. It's on the so Ooh. it's Ooh. Belly, New Jack City, Ooh. Juice, Paid in Full. I know. Ooh. Which one? Got it. I'm gonna you, you go know, first. you know what's so funny? My husband right now would totally be like, "Damn, y'all gave Kate the wrong one," because I hadn't seen any of these not, movies prior to meeting him. So my oh. whole black oh, card oh. has been revoked. Okay, prior oh. to meeting him. Oh, prior, but to meeting I mean, him. I, prior to meeting him. But after the fact, now I guess I would say New Jack City. It's mm. probably the oldest for me. Okay. No. no. What? no really Thank you for watching Black Coffee. <laughs> it's been a great episode. Did I fail you? I probably failed him so bad. <laughs> He is somewhere, so he's yeah, going he to is. roast you. He's fighting the air somewhere. He's fighting the air. Look, sorry to know. He does like Wesley Snipes, so. He's a good actor. I don't know. I, so, well, New York City you, got it. What do you guys think? was pretty bad. I don't know. Go ahead. Okay, I, so. I don't know. All right. <clears throat> Juice ain't going nowhere. Of course. No, I agree. Rest in peace, Tupac. Always. The legend. Always. Agreed. Stand on it. Thank you. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh, ten toes. Ten toes. Ten toes. Damn. Yeah. My son Cairo, his middle name is Shakur, so. See? Oh, there you go. Nowhere. Okay. I would say New Jack City has a stay. <laughs> Classic. Okay. Classic. Um, Belly may be, without exaggeration, the worst acted movie right. in the history of hood <laughs> movies. And that's saying a lot. It, yeah. Certainly, certainly the worst acted, like, like, um, like mainstream. I'm not talking about like the straight to DVD right, joint. Right, right, right. Paid in full. Watch your mouth. Get it together. <laughs> Wood Harris is such though. a good actor. Yeah, and here's what I'll say. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take. What about Makai? And Makai, of course, of course. I'm going what to. What about camera? And, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going. I'm going to get rid of Paid in Full. Oh! And here's oh, why. What's wrong with you? Because Belly is so bad, it's good. No, it's oh. not. All right. Let's just go to Africa. Let's no. just go to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Be you and the baby. All right. Then it's just black. Uh, it's just in Africa. Not, not a country. I'm keeping paying. Yikes. Though. Belly is clearly the answer. Not clearly. only Not only was it a bad movie, but I'd give anybody $10 to tell me what <laughs> was the plot about. That's true. <laughs> what it about? That's true. It Can was, you tell me a, a little? It's a very simple plot. It was a very long music video. Yes. The lighting. I remember the lighting. The lighting was so really, like, dramatic. The very Hype Williams. Yeah. yeah. That's why I said it was a very long music video. It was trash as a movie, two though. two rappers. It was trash. It was a very clear no, plot really. line about a guy who wanted to move his family, and he was involved in drugs, and there were snitches, and there was a minister, and there was a plot <laughs> to murder him, and there was a trip to Africa, and there was a random kid on the park bench who told him right. who happened to have the Illmatic lyrics. Right. It's all connected. It made okay. sense it's to me. It's not, and yep. you're lying. Paid in full can never go. Okay? I, can't even I know some, some of my friends have named it. their kids A's off of paid in full. I well, get that's, that's it. A, that's, that's a, a lot. larger issue. Hey, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't believe I'm you not gonna say who. <laughs> to say that you would get rid of paid in full of a belly? Because belly so it's like pooty tank. It's so bad it's good. No, no. You know I what? I don't know about pooty tank either though. You don't like pooty tank? That, nah. it, it depends on. Ah. It dep nah. Don't. All right, you can't. Fine. You know what? We're gonna move on then. Yeah. You smoking sherm, bro. <laughs> sherm sticks. I'm gonna have to catch up on my films. We're gonna, we're gonna give you a little list. Yeah. Start with state. Start, start with state property. Oh no. My God. All right. No, anyway. Don't. He's, it's just a Philly thing. The consensus is no. Yes. It's, uh -huh. a, it's a no. Fine. You make me mad. I like hood movies. <laughs> Do you? Yes. And speaking of hoods, <laughs> let's talk a little about something affecting hoods across the country, and that. Is gentrification. <sighs> did y'all read? So did y'all read about Biggie's old house? So he yes. had a one-bedroom apartment in Brooklyn. It's now renting for four thousand dollars a month. Uh, one bedroom. Is it because of the history? The history around it, like because it was That's his nice own, spot. or is it just gentrification? I think it's gentrification. Gentrification. One it's on St. James. Though? It's on St. James. Yeah. Oh. St. James about Fulton Street. Yeah. I grew up around that area, and I've seen the prices hike from. Like my mom bought her, her condo apartment for less than six figures in 1990. Mm. Now you can't even, if you fix your mouth to say six figures, somebody gonna slap you. Oh, yeah. Like apartments are going to buy brownstones, million, two million, three Absolutely. million in Fort Greene, Clinton Hill, uh, bed -Stuy. So it's not surprising, mm -hmm. but I'm sure Biggie God bless the dead is mad right now. Yeah. This is one bedroom shack that he talked about is now $4,000. $4, and who's going to be living there? Right. right. 
GM. It ain't the junior mafia, right. Yeah. right. Here's the thing. It's funny. My husband, um, when he retired from the NFL back in 2009, this is now 10 years later, we moved back to Brooklyn and it was still a hood. I remember my mom clutching her pearls and she was like, you're moving my daughter where? Right. <laughs> so where did you grow up? I grew up in Canarsie. Okay. I didn't, okay. So that was like the private houses. Yeah. I was a private house kid. Right, you know what I mean? Far. I was. Ooh. But then he's moving me back to Crown Heights and we're leaving a beautiful house in Canton, Michigan. It's like, what's going on? He had some foresight because he was like, you know, it's about to get gentrified around here. And I was like, what? Like, yeah, what was that? Right. I didn't grasp the concept of what was about to happen. Yeah. And then here we are 10 years later. And I'm just like, what in the bike lane? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I mean, is that a Connecticut muffin on my corner? It's right. Insane. On Nostrand right. Avenue? Right. right. That was like, a good muffin. They make a good muffin. They do. It's a really good do. Look, no, but that, that's, I'm a gentrifier. Yes. And that's one of the things we have to accept. The gentrification is about um, economic, the, the, the shift in, in economic, the economic formation of the neighborhood. Right. And that it's not just about white people moving in. Because sometimes we think gentrification is when white people move right. in. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's not about that. It's about displacing the, the, the current population right. through this in, influx of people who right. have a new economic you know, stratus. And then right. who tends to be this place? Exactly. Right. Exactly. exactly. Right. Yeah. And, and, and obviously, you know, BT Awards just happened and mm -hmm. Regina Hall used her platform to talk about the Don't Mute DC movement. And as, mm -hmm. a, as a native, it is really just, it makes my skin crawl every time I go home and see like 10 more black families moved out of what used to be the Chocolate City mm -hmm. and now it's 10 new white families. Mm -hmm. I think the problem with gentrification and why it becomes a negative uh, narrative is when people of other races move in and try to completely erase the culture yes. that was there at first. Like That's you might be a gentrifier, thought. but you're not going into Brooklyn like, ayo, turn that biggie down. Right. Ayo, for real? Right. I'm about to call the cops. Put on some no one does. Right. Like, you're not doing on, that. Right. And so I think that's when it becomes a thing when, you know, go go is the literal sound of Washington, D.C. For sure. And you move into a place that's a gallery place that in D.C. that's kind of like the Times Square of D.C. where everything is, lots of lights. Right. And you say, turn down that volume <laughs> of your of your <laughs> music that you've your been playing culture. here for for 70 Absolutely. years. Absolutely. Right. Like you don't need it. Jamaicans say, get rid of the reggae. Right. Like, what right. does that like, mean? How, do you, exactly. how yeah. do you do that? Right. I don't know if you guys heard of, there was a, a pub on Nostrand Avenue mm -hmm. and their theme was gunshot wounds, gunshot holes in the in the um, the walls. Oh. Brown paper bags is what they serve the drinks out of. What? And guess who owned the joint? White, white people. people. White people. And there was a big uproar in the community because everyone that you know we were out there like, how dare you right. make a mockery of what used to be our hood? Right. right. Yeah. Because it's not funny outrageous over there. It's not like funny. you're mocking it. Yes. Because exactly. I, there was like yes, well, and you try to capitalize tours. on that now. Yes. Yeah. There yeah. were even hood tours at one point where they I were like, that. when it really started to first be gentrified, they were like, well, you can go around and see where people were killed and monuments and murals, and it's like, so. This is real pain. Yeah, this is money. actual, like, people, those gunshots, mm -hmm. people probably died. Like, right. that's not funny. It's never funny. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like, it's that's when it becomes this negative, stereotypical, like, point of view of, of gentrification where it's like a white person putting down their flag and they're like, this is my land right. now. They're going to Columbus the whole thing. And I, the, the only, I have a big issue with everything, but I have a real bit, I don't mind gentrification, but nobody, no, no, I, 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 here's why I don't mind it. I don't mind it because I think the intentions are good. Like, there's a Whole Foods and an Apple store downtown Brooklyn. Right. But the problem with gentrification is that none of the original people get that were there get it. to enjoy it. enjoy it. I like or, kale. Or afford it. Yeah, or right. fail. But just to be clear, the, the, the gentrification isn't the building of the Apple store. No, the gentrification it, is the moving in and the, the displacement of right, right, That's what I'm right. saying. We should always have a problem with gentrification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ideally, we should want an Apple store where, where people in the hood I'm, can have that's it. That's what I'm saying. Right, right, right. right. So I, I misspoke. Yeah. I, I want to enjoy the Whole Foods. Right. You know, but it's too high for Especially people like me. I'm not vegan. Oh, that's another story. Um, <laughs> but I'm I'm not able to live there and 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 uh, just walk there like everybody else right. can. Right. My people can't do that anymore. Absolutely. Right. That's it's not just talking. Brooklyn. D.C., New yes. York, Atlanta, Philadelphia, Baltimore. There's yeah. all these places mm -hmm. where where it's happening. And a lot of times universities are a big part of it. Right. They're, they're part of the gentrification plan. Right. Columbia University up in yep. Harlem, uh, uh, Temple University in Philadelphia, University of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. You can go and you can look around the country and you see this happening. Yeah. And it's really dangerous. But the question is, what do we do? That's the question. There are I'm answers. Like, okay, sh yes, please share. Oh, I'll just tell you a, a, a couple. We have a game plan. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Take some notes. Let's rally we, up we the have to, we yes. have to, it, It's about housing justice. So, for example, mm -hmm. one of the things that we fight for here in New York is rent control. Right. Yeah. Rent control allows, because what happens if people get priced out? You have to. Yeah. yeah. Have rent, to. rent control is one of those things. Not abandoning public housing. Mm -hmm. Public housing doesn't have to look like the, the Fort Greene projects, to, but there are other ways to have 
public housing that is fair and equitable for people. Right. Mm -hmm. Having 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 um, subsidies so that people can have access to food and things like mm -hmm. that right. in the neighborhood. All these mm -hmm. things matter. And if we fight for housing justice and don't see gentrification as natural, then we can win. But as long as there's capitalism, there's going to be gentrification. Right. Right. So we have to figure out how to fight that bigger machine to, in order to do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yes, you know, black people, we gentrifiers. Because yeah. I used to come through Brooklyn mad as hell. Like, yo, the gentrifiers in here, man. They take it. Uh, <laughs> right. like, where you from? That's you. It's like, you got a good job. You make this much money. Mm -hmm. You're not from here. Yeah. And you live in a building that didn't exist 10 years ago. And a Pilates studio in the, the basement. I, well, I, I, so on the I, fourth floor. Okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Jerk face. So the building that I live in is like a row house, and it existed years ago. Yeah. I don't know why I don't feel like a gentrifier. I don't know why, because I'm like, I don't, like, I was there staying with family before I got my own place, and like, I just don't. So don't the, the ability to afford to live in the area then makes you a gentrifier? Is that what it is? I think. See, it depends that, on what the area was before. Mm. Because I still have a, I live in an older apartment. Like, my, I don't got no amenities. Right. So, so the people who lived there 20 years ago, where are they? And not, and not literally, but that would be the question I would I ask. I mean, it was right. just a, mine was a natural move out. Like, right. my so mentor it wasn't moved forced, out. Forced, yeah, right. it wasn't forced, like. Right. So there, there, right. there are differences. It's, it's like more nuance. Like, right. you, you can, you can move from somewhere to a, another place that used to be predominantly black and might not be anymore. And mine's still black on my block. Right, you're right. black. So <laughs> does that make you a... You're not coming in, you're not changing anything? I'm not changing anything. nothing. But if you're no. part of a thrust of people... So, if, so, for example, in my neighborhood in Brooklyn, I used to do Brooklyn cable access there, like... BCAT. BCAT, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to do black men screaming. The show yeah. black men screaming. Yeah. Okay. And, oh, yeah. and when I would park the car, they'd be like, yo, don't lock your doors, stay close to the light, don't do that. I, when I actually moved to that neighborhood, I didn't even realize that it was the same neighborhood. I literally didn't know that BCAT right. was around the corner because yeah. there was buildings, there was, there was spas, there was juice bars, there was all this stuff that looked totally different. It was a different mm -hmm. neighborhood. Right. And regardless of how much money I made, I was part of a thrust of people that are now living in the neighborhood and the people who were on those same streets are now somewhere else. They're probably moving east in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. but, but more broadly, they're, they're often leaving the city. Mm -hmm. and so what you're beginning right. to see also is the suburbanization of poverty. Uh -huh. You're watching people, you're watching these, these suburbs that used to, we think of the suburbs as a great place to be. Sometimes people from the hoods that get moved, could have moved out there because say, they'll sell that crib in, in, in Brooklyn and then they ain't got no place else to go because yeah. the prices are going through the roof. Right. That's, what yeah, that's what's happening away. in D.C. Like, Absolutely. Literally every quadrant of D.C. now is right. like, I, I would love to get an actual study. But there's a, a study in the Washington Post and other places that say D.C. is the most intensely gentrified city in the whole nation. Right. Yeah. Just because of how quickly it happened. In the, yep. in the past mm. 10 years, I believe it was from 2001 to 2011, it was like literally, like I think 60% of the families that were there that created D.C. were moved out. And so now everyone's moving to PG County, Montgomery County, all these sub suburbs, yeah. and, and no one can afford to stay in the to city. In the and city. it's disgusting yeah. Yeah. because it's Absolutely. like, we created this beautiful city and this beautiful right. culture, and it wasn't perfect. But it was ours. Right. And so it's just really hard to go back home and see every time I come home. Like, A Street Corridor used to be the, like, you weren't, no, you weren't about to go over there, like, right. unless mm -hmm. you, you know, some things to do. Right. <laughs> My mom wouldn't let me party over there when I was in high school or anything. Uh -huh. And so, and now it's like bars and spas yeah. and, like, the gentrified restaurants. It's right, just exactly. like, what? When we move back to Brooklyn, I think about wanting to raise our children in the Brooklyn we knew. And now it's a completely different one. And I feel like we felt it the most when it came to the school system, mm. even. Yes. Yeah. The school yep. systems. I mean, trying to get my son into a school. He took the gifted and talented exam after UPK, tested in the 99th percentile. Yeah. So nice. he got, you know, a little breath. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. But maybe smart. <laughs> exactly his mom. But he ended up, you know, just the right dad. Yeah. Um, but no. Trying to get him into a school yeah. that had the gifted and talented mm -hmm. program that wasn't overcrowded, they ended up having a lottery system that sent him to a school all the way in Harlem that just so happened to be of the top five schools, 85% black and Latina. Wow. wow. Which is good, but. Which is good. However, this lottery system was trying to send us up an hour and a half away wow. from home. How am I supposed to realistically commute my son there, there right. and Right. So now we finally get him into a school that's great. Now it's overcrowded. Mm. There are people who are using their affluence to buy their children into gifted and talented programs. Wow. Right. Because they're now all moving to Brooklyn. Oh right. So those and they don't want to pay fifty thousand for private school. Of course oh. they do. So they're taking over the of public course, funds. They're taking over the public funds. Jesus goodness. Oh. I mean, we we really I wish we could dig into this more. We're we gonna do another day. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I really want the don't mute DC people to come on here as well to talk mm -hmm. about it. But 
Mm. Speaking of your family, yes. one of the things that we love about following you is how open you and Deval are about literally every part of y'all lives. Like when y'all cool, cool, when y'all not cool, when y'all not cool, when y'all good, when y'all not we good. We figure if we're gonna tell y'all the story, we have to tell y'all the whole truth. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. We can't yeah. we can't start picking and choosing. Exactly. So, yeah. And you guys just launched a podcast. We did. Tell me a little bit about the podcast before we go into the topic of the day. No, absolutely. So it's Dead Ass with Kadena and Deval. Yes. I mean, very New York. It's, very it's so New York. Dead ass. Dead ass. And we fought for that name because we knew what it meant for the culture, trying to hold on to a little bit of Brooklyn. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but we pretty much wanted to be able to give a voice to millennials through the lens of a millennial married couple yes. with children. Yes. So we discuss everything. I mean, between marriage, love, finance, kids, everything under the sun. We didn't want it to encompass just relationship issues or right. topics. Right. Um, so yeah, we're about seven episodes in, airs every Wednesday. Yes. Make sure you subscribe where you listen and yes. all that good stuff for yes. podcasts. So, so far it's been great. I'm so happy it's for been you. Great. You guys Thank are doing you. so well. And, and what I love about y'all is that y'all are like one of the only millennial representations of like a, a really dope marriage that's like young and thriving but still has kids and not trying to grow up. So right. do, does that become a lot of pressure? Like that people look at y'all as kind of these, this like relationship goals, millennial couple? Yeah. Yeah, we kind of like to shy away from the whole relationship goals because we feel like this is this works for us, you know? Mm. And so many times people have asked us for advice. Like, we do have listener letters. People will write in and we give our advice, but we never want to put ourselves on a, on a pedestal as if this is what people should aspire to yeah. do. However, we do feel like it's important for us to show you can be an individual, you can support each other, you can goal chase, you can dream chase, you can have children, you can be a mom, you can bounce right back. Like there's so many things that I want to show people and my husband and I want to show people that we can do, mm -hmm. that it is possible. Yeah. So um, is there a pressure around it? A little bit, Yeah. Um, but we don't get too involved in that. We feel like we're also content creators. Our YouTube channel, uh, this really started with us trying to, as content creators and as actors, put our reel out there. Right. What better way to do it than on social media is right. free, people have access, and now we've accessed so many people this become kind of like this movement yeah. for us yeah. inadvertently that we didn't plan for, but we accept the challenge. Yeah. I mean, well, let me ask you a question. Since, since, since you're like our resident relationship expert on the show. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. What happened? Y'all not in relationships? Well, no you relationships know, I ain't in it. My yeah. mama told me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're the expert. You, got, you, you know, I like, mean, yes. We, I'm we, about we, 17 years in. So that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what yes. I'm saying. So, uh, what if this open marriage thing? Mm -hmm. Some people say it's a recipe for disaster. Some people say it's the only thing that keeps their relationship healthy. Mm -hmm. Some people say, you know, I, 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 it might not be for you, but do you see it as a functional way to have a relationship? I feel, I, this is my take on it. If it works for you and your spouse or your partner, mm -hmm. so be it. The biggest issue, I think, with a lot of relationships is having the outside noise that drowns mm -hmm. what it is you two have decided on. Mm -hmm. If this is what you decided on because it works for both of you and it makes you happy, do it. Why? Do it. Yeah. Do it. So I would never sit here and judge and say, maybe it doesn't work for Deval and I to have an open relationship, but the farthest thing from our minds is to judge anybody who does decide on it. Yeah. Right. I've heard that it's an oxymoron. Why have a marriage if you're <laughs> going to be open? Right. And in what terms is it open? Is it just open sexually? Is it open, you know, in terms of having a whole entire other relationship? I know there was a show on, uh, was it TLC? Yeah. Sister Wives, Seeking Sister Wives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, there was a black couple on there. There was a black there. couple on there. Yeah. So apparently now black people are starting to be a little bit more open, open to the idea right. of it. Um, and, and that's just my take on it. If it works for you, and this is exactly why I don't ask for a relationship advice either from anybody because mm. everyone's jaded everyone's tainted in their yeah. own right because of their own life experiences mm -hmm. so it does if it doesn't work for you don't do it right. I, I got friends it works for I, I think I think it it can work depending on the people right. I think again it's situational mm -hmm. but I think people are so afraid of communicating hey this is what I want that they'll suffer in silence as opposed to being happy. So you never know if you propose it a certain way mm -hmm. or have certain stipulations right. or put it all on the table. Because if this is your partner, there should be nothing that you keep Absolutely. from, especially if you marry. Yeah. Right. Put We've it on the table. My husband and I, sorry not to cut no, you off. No, no, We've no. had super difficult conversations. Right. I mean, being together since 18 years old. No. Oof. Yeah. What's exactly. one of the most difficult? You know? uh, sex. Okay. Sex becomes an issue for us. You think about our sex life from 18-year-olds who are like young kids in college yeah, and yeah. I'm ready to bust wide open. Yeah. <laughs> and then you want to throw in bills uh -huh. and work and children and pregnancy and, and postpartum yeah. and three of them. And 
and, and careers. Like it becomes a lot. A lot. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's something that we both had to talk about openly. Like you, I'm not satisfied in this area or I need help in this area. I need you to do X, Y, Z to get me to the point where I want to bust it wide open again. Yeah, you know, like little true. things like that yeah. have to be on the table. You have to be transparent about it. So you're right, the suffering and silence part, because the, what tends to happen is someone's going to go out there and step out and then there's the deceit right. and the lies right. and mm -hmm. the cheating. And that's where openness can help too. Because then you, you, you can say, all right, it, I don't believe, and this isn't me speaking, this is what this hypothetical person is saying. This hypothetical mm -hmm. Mark. <laughs> we'll call him Mark. Okay, Mark. we'll call him Mark. Let's just call him hypothetical yeah. Mark. We'll call him Mark. Hark. Well, yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hark from Brooklyn says. <laughs> no, there are a lot of people who say, you know, monogamy is not a natural thing. And uh. relationships are good and they're functional, healthy, you want a life partner but you just might want to have sex with somebody else. Right. Or you might want a different kind of connection. And so right. your marriage becomes an opportunity to have that bond and that future, mm -hmm. but then I might step out in these other ways. I have right. friends who do that. They have, right. they have rules around their open marriage. They have rules around their relationship. Mm -hmm. um, you, like, you don't fall in love. You don't, go, you don't date someone else full time, but you can have other kinds of relationships, other kinds of bonds. You can't have sex at certain times. You don't bring them home. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there, there are all kinds of rules they make that make sense for them. Right. And, and one couple I know have been doing it for 30 years. Another couple I know only been doing it for about two, right. but, they're, but and they're still trying to work out some details on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think I could deal with that personally, okay. but but I understand. Right. But I understand why it works for some people. Yeah. I, I mean, what? I'm too selfish. Um, like not. I just <laughs> there's no She's way not sharing. I'm not yeah. sharing. I don't believe in sharing. Um, but, you, but we don't own people. We don't. You don't own people. Yeah, though. Donald. But, <laughs> right, Sterling. Sterling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Where yeah. Are you? <laughs> either way. I mean, yeah. hey, brother, hey, you're right. Right. But no, you do not own people, but you do absolutely own who you are and who they are. Like, yeah. you, who you are and, 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 and what you want to be to them. Like, hopefully you guys own how you feel about each other and the experience that you would like to share with each other. Right. And for me, I would be, and I'm always very open, like, if I'm going to get married, this is going to be a me and you partnership. We're going to be life partners. It's going to be us mm -hmm. against the world. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day... It is a hard thing to to put on anybody to stay married. It's tough. Like mm -hmm. people are going to mess up. People are going to be human. But at the end of the day, like open, nah, you can't. No, that's not for me. Right. I can't. I can't do it. I would just no. I think a lot of the would... issue arises too. Sorry. No, no, please. Um, a lot of the issue arises too when you take the choice away from somebody, and yeah. that's one thing that my husband and I are very adamant about. Give it to me straight. Mm -hmm. Straight, no chase. It may hurt, but at least I can now make a, a decision. I can make a choice. Don't take my choice away from me to decide whether I want to continue in this or not. Mm -hmm. Some people believe that relationships are seasonal. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't believe in the long haul. Right. You know, Summertime. you may be here for a season, for a time, and then we've, we've had our ways and we've gone. That's for somebody who may not be monogamous or believe in monogamy. Right. Right. So they may feel like there's a, a turnover. But when my choice is taken away from me, then I get a That's upset. Never okay. Right. We got comments coming in on social. Daywalker. 1975 tweeted, hell yeah, to the question of open marriage. <laughs> For me, it's the only kind of realistic relationship that actually can work long term if you can find the right person. There has to still be rules and boundaries set, so it's not a free for all, but it can work. Yeah. Now, it's interesting. Do your thing. Hold on one second, I, I, I want, I want to, there's some stuff that happened on the ground that I want us to talk about. Oh, some too. ground stuff. Some ground yeah. stuff. See, one thing that we often see trending on social media is the phrase black love. But we don't always often talk about sort of what black love means exactly. And so what we want to do is go to the streets of New York City and find out what people are saying. Yeah. Black love can be a smile on the sidewalk. When I was growing up, I was like, why are there always so many black people saying hi? And how are you doing? Like, I need that. And they need that as well. So that's how I pay it back. And that's my definition of black love, acknowledgement. Love the title. It's ours, it's for us to define. I don't think that anyone should dictate how you define your own relationship with yourself or with anybody else. So if we wanted to call it purple love or blue love, that's our prerogative. I think people get very irritated when people of color, black people, um, queer folk define what they want and who they are and how they plan to carry out that relationship. Mm. Deep. That's deep, man. Yeah. Black love. I would like to clarify that that was a segue, that open relationships, we are not putting those together with black love, just so we say it. Not necessarily. It's a part of it, right. a part of it but we're not just making sense. Yeah. It's not the same exact no, no, thing. No, no, no. Thank you, Gia. You're right. Because yeah, we was like, yeah. speaking of, speaking open of black love. let's talk about black love. Like, no. Right. Let's, let's, they are not synonymous. Right. No. Yeah. Several walks. They cousins. They, 
They in there. They, they related. Know, they, they see could each other at the reunion. Distance. Hey, what's up? Go. Yeah, this and this and this and this. Who's bringing the potato salad, though? They, they ain't that distant. That's an open uh. relationship. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Wash I your hands. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, what do you think about Black Love? Um, well, Deval and I were able to be on the Black Love show, yes. which, was, is amazing. which is amazing. Yes, yeah. shout out to Cody and Tommy Oliver for even foreseeing the need for that. Mm -hmm. But when I think of Black Love, I take it back to just think about legacy. Think about generational wealth. Mm -hmm. Usually that starts with the family unit, mm -hmm. right? You think about the history of Black Love back to days of slavery. Black men and women could not marry, because why? There's strength in the nucleus of a family unit. Mm. So why not set us apart? Let's criminalize our men. Let's incarcerate them. Mm. Let's keep them out of the home. The women are left to feel alone. Yep. We're accused of being aggressive yeah. and bitter and upset. So the more divide that you create, the less chances there are for that black love to exist, for that family unit to exist. Mm. So for me, black love is so important because of what the black family unit, the black man and the black woman and the black children have had to endure yes. right. to make that exist. Yes. And if it's not seen, it's made to believe that it's not a thing. But right. there's normalcy around black love. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. And being able to see those stories on black love, the hashtags, yeah. the photo shoots, yeah. black love between man, woman, 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 man, man, whatever, you're, whatever it is, mm -hmm. Just being able to see that, and one person said in the street, just loving on each other, like yeah. saying hello. Mm -hmm. We've been taught for so long to have that self-hate. Mm -hmm. And that self-hate then also materializes into relationships. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that, to me, is, is black love, being able to just kind of transcend that mm -hmm. and now show it. Right. Show yeah, it. I love so, that. So, like, a lot of resiliency is, like, from what I'm hearing, is steeped in, in black love, which makes it different. Because I was on the fence. I was like, well, love is love. But I understand from saying what you said, mm -hmm. Bringing that full circle, we were taught to be apart for so long and right. separated and right. pieced together and thrown over here, thrown over here, that two black people coming together, Yo. there's yes. a lot of strength, there's Think resiliency. About the strength, yeah, right? the yeah, stuff yeah. That you can achieve exactly. and accomplish. Yeah. And like if you even look at today, like the even the effects of slavery and this the, the justice system that we still have to deal with today. Yes. Yeah. Like it's revolutionary to still mm -hmm. choose each other, like as black people, as people Absolutely. who understand yes. our walks and yeah. what that means. And, right. and like my parents have been together for over 30 years now. And so right. like, you know, I, so. I I'm a product of black love. And just to see the differences and like how my brother and sister and I enter into rooms like right. filled with love. Like right. it's just a little bit, it's a little, it's just the, I think it's so important. It's just a little bit. Agreed. One you of those things thrive. where you, yeah, like yeah, you and just it's feel great. Yeah, like, I love you. Like, right, I and it's not perfect. No, of course like, not. They fight and we fight, and we're not perfect people. Right. But I do come from a place that's like, let me give love before I try to hold it back. Right, right. And so right, I just right. think that's such a beautiful thing. Black I love, love that. I love yeah, that. love black love. One thing that I do not love though are the opinions <laughs> of Dr. David <laughs> Lamont Hill. He knows who David is. I, um. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Wait, I, thank you, thank you. We have a segment on this show called <laughs> I Said Where I Sa What I Said, which people stand on a hill and they say what they have to say. This okay. week, Dr. Hill has the floor. We're gonna give you 30 seconds to say what you gotta say about right. something that we're probably not gonna agree with. <laughs> Throwing it out there like that. Is that what the record has shown we don't agree? We usually just Absolutely. Talk, that Did you I'll not? be right. What about the belly thing? Are you an Aries? Sag. You, oh, you're a Sag? Yes. I'm a Sag, See? too. Well, shut exactly. up. Yeah. Gio. Yeah. I'm a Virgo. Uh, uh, okay. uh, <laughs> yes. Virgo. Yes. Right. Virgos are great. Lots of fire up here. Yes. 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 Mark, you got 30 seconds. We're going to give you the clock. I don't even need a 30. I don't need all 30. You don't need 30? All right, well, let's put 30 just We're going to put it up. Put it up. Don't matter. Put it up. Don't matter. Here we go. Go ahead. All right. So when you talk music. Oh, oh, bars. Oh, no. bars. I hear bars. A lot of times, you know, people talk about the great groups. Oh, oh my God. Of the 90s. Oh. And people say, the boys then. to men, shout out to boys to men. People say Jodeci, shout out to Jodeci. But they leave out the group <laughs> that made it all happen. The group, the straw that stirs the drink of 90s music. Ooh. The underestimated, underappreciated, undervalued group of the <sighs> decade. It's over. High five. Oh my God. What? High five. Fine. See, I see Wait, your face, Kadeem. You You're Google? making. Let, let's no, Google. No, no, listen. No, 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 no. No, you think high five say... is better than Jodeci? Listen, listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. Let me know what I'm saying. High five is better than Jodeci right now. I'll walk up. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. High, everybody makes the high five face because y'all forget all the hits of the 90s that y'all love. Kissing game, unconditional love, hard to get, 
Never should have let you go. I can go on. No, you, you can't. No, I really, really <laughs> can. They can't. I really, stop, really stop that can. Too, and, 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 and the point is... What are you saying? The point is, they had so many top hits. If you look at the R&B charts, their number, their number one hits were right up there with Jodeci. Their number one hits were past other groups like H-Town, past groups like Shy from D.C., past a whole bunch of other Leave folks. But y'all don't give high-five love mm -hmm. because there's a lot of high-five. Hey, there's an anti-high-five lobby out there <laughs> trying to destroy the high-five legacy. Politics. And not I politics. am not going to allow that to happen. So high-five is, is the elite group of the 90s. Are you high? I said what I What's said. What you? Oh, my. All I First of all, it say, took two minutes. All you have to all say. All I have to say is this is coming from a man that said the IG. <laughs> <laughs> V I G. So I don't know. I mean, it's a no for me, dog. There's a no way in hell coming out of my mouth. I'm Sister Act Two soundtrack. High five. Okay, can I can I ask y'all a question? Yes, go for it. Okay, because we're not even talking to him. When he said high five, did you want me to Google who the group was? Absolutely. Okay. I needed to hear a song. Sing me a tune. Hum it. Well, we know Kissing Game. How we do don't again? sing because we get sued. Yeah, but we get sued. I like the way. I like the way you. What is it? Kiss me when we're playing the kissing kiss game. Kiss Kiss me when you're playing. I like. That's yeah. All oh. There you right. Go. Exactly. Okay. Cool. Right. Cute. That's cute. I. I mean, but we don't have to Google Jodeci. I can't even believe I mean, there's a screen with High Five and Jodeci on it. First together. of all, only one part. Let me tell you about Jodeci. Uh, there's only. Uh, you want to give me this? No. There's, Jodeci I'm lately. A, no. There's, I'm gonna break this. It's not Jodeci. You like? It's Casey and Jojo. You like? No, no one no. cares about Dalvin. I I'll, give, Dalvin. I'll give you Devontae I because, of the, because of the production. Me, I care, baby. I did an I interview with Jodeci one day. Casey that. didn't show up. I think he was still asleep. Okay. I don't know what so JoJo you're was doing. You're disgruntled then. Dalvin, yeah. no, 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 I'm saying Dalvin showed up. You know okay. what? You know, we didn't want to interview Dalvin. You know why? Because no one knew who Dalvin Watch was. Watch your mouth. Hey, you can't, Dalvin can't there, nobody like, hear Dalvin was there me. like two hours early. You know. Can't nobody <laughs> name me a, five, a high five member. Can't. Not exactly. here, aside from you. I'm can anybody try. on the set? Here's my thing. No, not, here's not my thing. You don't Jodeci even know who they are. To, They're trying to, don't hate on Tony. Jo Jodeci was able to cultivate a legacy that still, like, we still play their song. Now that we don't play Ooh. high five too, but we still However. play their albums. Like, people love However. Jodeci. I love Jodeci. Think about that Martin episode. Right? Thank you. I mean, hello. I'll give you the Martin episode. But that was about Martin. I gotta go. I gotta go because I, I, I'm, I'm hurt right now. What's the comment they on? I tried to be vulnerable. Nothing. No, don't do it. I tried to. First of all, <laughs> the lead singer High Five passed away. That's the only oh, reason they didn't make the comeback. Peace. No. They would have been headlining the BET. They, they would have got the legend they award at the BET Awards. That's the reason. They're mid. Goodbye. Speaking of High Five, I'm going to take my High Five back, Sag. Thank you. Oh, wow. Five over here. your birthday? You December, Sag? Yeah. Or November, Sag? December. What? You try to find ways to. Well, <laughs> the 17th. I'm in December, oh, yeah, Sag. ain't shit. Right. Hello, you got a seven in it, ain't shit. All right, we got to go. But before we head out, we're going to check in. One more time on social media. Earlier we asked, would you agree to an open marriage? And you said, oh God. at least Jenny Rose said, hell no. Why get married in the first place? Key Sheets wrote, wrote, I am a selfish soul. So no. Retweet. Cherie tweeted, sure, why not? <laughs> Hope right. people will be sliding her DMs later. <laughs> Hustle Queen Lee tweeted, open marriage sounds like an oxymoron. Nothing against individuals who choose the lifestyle, but I can't fathom the thought of sharing my husband with someone else. It's a straight up Hell no for me. Mm. Well, it's fine. You, your sis. Some to people share it, they own. don't even know it. Exactly. Oh. How about that? Yo, a word. Somebody's husband okay. is for everybody. Oh, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> Just what it is. Doors of the church are open. All right. Yikes. We've got to go. But, <laughs> Kadeen, thank you for joining yes. us. Yes. This was, this was fun. So fun. Oh, my God. Please tell me I can come back. Oh, you can come back, but don't go nowhere yet because we got some more stuff to do with you. Black All Coffee right. Fam, if you haven't already, now is the perfect time to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe to Black Coffee on YouTube. Of course, subscribe to BET, but also subscribe to the Black Coffee channel as well. And be sure to join us right here live every day, 10 a.m. Eastern. The conversation is going to keep going. No, Kadeen ain't going nowhere because we have an after show on Twitter. It's called Black Coffee to Refill. Oh. Stay right here. Yes. Another round.